Hello, Craig. Losing to a oh. winless Kennesaw State. That's so sad. That's so One sad. Of my favorite teams to root against. Liberty. Yeah. yeah. No longer undefeated. And I think any that? loss on their schedule is an elimination because their schedule is pretty weak. Yeah. Um, yes, it is. Kennesaw, Kennesaw, I think, isn't, isn't their first year I, of FBS Yeah. I mean, they. Year, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm going to look this up. But I, to my recollection, uh, at the prediction tracker, which is one of my favorite things. Look, it kind of aggregates prediction models. I think that Liberty was a 90, 95% or something like that. Let me hold on. Well, now I'm worried about this weekend for Cougs. Well, while Jeff nope, is 90, 91%, 91%, percent. They were, uh, it, they were 26 point underdogs at kickoff. Uh, prediction tracker Ooh. had them at, I don't know, 20, 20, about 23 points worse. Than than Liberty, so uh, yeah, cool. yeah, ninety one percent. Although, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know, man. Liberty choking that that's that's a good deal. That's a good deal all that's around. A good deal. And uh, this is not a, a Liberty hating podcast, although you know, I'm, I mean is. sometimes this is. is this is well, it's this is podcast versus everyone, which includes Liberty. This is episode episode two twenty seven. I'm Craig Powers. With me, as usual, is Jeff Newser. Hello. Jeff, let's we get to do something. Before we get into that <laughs> sick Hawaii game that like, yeah. you almost predicted the exact right score for, um, talk a little bit about, please, the, the, the premium subscription. We always throw this at the end, but we're just going to throw it up real top yeah. real quick. And, and, and what, what does it cost? What does it mean? All that. Yeah, folks, so if you are uh, a podcast listener but don't really subscribe to the newsletter or uh, engage with any other content, that's all at podcastvseveryone.com. There you can subscribe to the newsletter, and then we also have a premium level. uh, Starts at uh, $5 a month or $50 a year, and what that gets you is uh, the occasional members-only content. You know, we do a little bit of that, my game day guides that I type up for Saturday mornings. Uh, you know, those fall in there, but also the big thing you get is access to our premium Slack, uh, for people who don't know what Slack is. It's kind of like a, I don't know, think like a giant fast moving message board. Um, so that that's for our members only our paying members only. We hang out, we talk, Craig and I are in there all the time talking with people. Um, it's, it, it really is like a really incredibly fun group of people, um, who, uh, yeah. just, they, they know Cougar sports. They care about Cougar sports. Um, and I, I think the thing that one of the things you and I have loved the most about it is that it's become this incredible refuge away from like Twitter and other social media where, um, you know, that can be somewhat, uh, I mean, the word gets over, he's been toxic, right? Like, you know, and you're, you, yeah. you can't have a conversation with other Cougs without, uh, you know, fans of Someone other schools jumping in there. Right. And so this is, this is all Cougs all the time. Um, we, in fact, we, we, we have all, all sorts of channels and one of them being, uh, the Apple cup channel. We have not archived the Apple cup channel yeah, yet. We archive every uh, other yeah. Channel, every other yeah. game thread channel within a few days, but the Apple yeah, cup we always archive lives. the game thread channels. Not, actually, not that it's one. It's actually, it's actually the Husky hating channel. At this yeah. Point, just yeah. That's what, that's what it's morphed into. So anyway, yeah. uh, if you're interested in that, go to podcast vs everyone.com. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter, uh, upgrade. And uh, yeah, that's that's our plug. So check it out. Yeah, and the only person we've ever had 
uh, dropped the upgraded membership, came back. So people like it. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, we had uh, fun. You know, I had fun going back uh, through um, some of the comments. I was I was obviously at a, at a music festival uh, this weekend yep. when we were young. Um, yep. I had basically no cell phone service, 70,000 people. It was sponsored by Verizon. I have at and I think that may have been part of it because my sister could uh, actually look up the score and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we were just looking up the score, which was fun. Um, you know, seeing when they extended the lead and, and just held. Um, but I did get a chance to watch it after. But it was fun to, like, go back and read some of the, the comments in the game thread how it mm-hmm. didn't start out so great. Um, obviously, Cougs uh, uh, turned over on downs in their first possession. Hawaii goes and takes a 3 0 lead. Hawaii kind of moves the ball pretty well on uh, first few possessions, but then they start turning it over, and then WC starts scoring touchdowns. And it went from this is scary to okay, we're fine in like yeah. two minutes. Like, I, I it yeah. was. It was really quick. It, like it, yeah. it was really because actually, while Steph and I, Steph and I were my sister, were checking the score. We saw seven three, and then we saw a few songs from her band, and then we check it again, and it was twenty one to three. And we're like, oh, yeah, okay, that's yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, that that was probably a, a pleasant surprise. I was I was off, so I watched the first half at home, and then had to leave at halftime to go. Uh, uh, press some cider, press, make, make some cider out of, out of some apples, uh, at a big, big party. And and the place where we were at was out toward Eatonville, which is, you know, kind of out there, not a lot of cell service. So I, I just didn't even bother with my phone left in the car, but Sarah had enough and enough cell service. She was able to, to show me the score in the second half. And that's where I went. I don't know. It's probably about 40 to 10 and she pulled it open it was 42 to 10 and i was like yeah you know it was uh i don't know man it was really nice i watched the game the rest of the game the next morning so i watched you know the second half on on delay you know like you did and i I just it was it was kind of like refreshing and nice to have a game that was just i nobody's gonna call it a complete game there were definitely things to you know nitpick and complain about or you know, ask for improvement or whatever. And we'll, we'll get into some of that stuff, but, um, but it certainly was more or less stress-free. Like um, there, there wasn't really any point where you felt like, you know, the, the game was really being threatened where the lead was, you know, in jeopardy, like, like none of that. You didn't feel like any of that was there. I mean, they didn't really cruise, but also like it was, it was pretty low stress. So, I mean, you know, for, when, for an when, event that gives me ulcers all the time, uh, yeah. it was it was nice to not have any ulcers for sure. When, when Hawaii Hawaii um, actually you know cut it twenty one ten at the start of the second half, WC scored yeah. right back and yeah. And at that point, you are like, yeah, they're they're in control, and they obviously yeah. continue to take control. It was forty two ten with ten minutes left in the game. Um, really, yeah. they could have won by more if they wanted to. Yes, um, yeah. but they were they really just they ran the ball, ran the clock out, like they had yep. like a six minute drive to just end the game. Like it was that was. <laughs> And that's the idea with the backup quarterback um, and and like entirely back, backup players, actually, pretty much. He made a couple nice throws too. He did. Um, he did a couple of first down throws and and uh, get that, he was a big part of running that clock out and just getting the heck yep. out of there. Yep. Um, which you love to see. Uh, and Matier was a sniper. Like I, yeah, I, I that it wasn't just the completion percentage. He it was just on point. He was making difficult throws. He was he, he was way better in yeah. the screen game. We talked about that last week. Way way better yep. with the screens. Didn't miss a single one of the screen throws. You know, yep. they, they kind of put them where they and need to be. And making good more screen throws, that. right? I mean, there's yeah. a difference between yeah. a bad and a good screen throw. So, but he just made some darts throws. That that throw to uh, first down um, to Hudson, where Hudson uh, kind of came back and 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 caught it. That was just yeah. I like that was a laser. And that that touchdown to Matt, Matt Mathers uh, Mathers, sorry. Um, the first touchdown to Mathers, uh, yep. that was just a laser and he, you know, a, a dime to Williams down the sideline. Um, just a lot of really tough throws that he made. Uh, and I mean, 23 to 27, like we, we would have, we would have taken 60% from Matier with the way he uses his legs. And yep. You, you, a guy's having 23 to 27 games like that feels really good. 
and it feels like yeah. maybe he maybe he's starting to turn a corner and um with the passing game because because teams are not letting him run as much and so he's just have he's having to throw the ball and you know obviously we've played the best teams we're going to play and if he, and he can figure that out like if he if he can be hitting you know i'm not, I'm not gonna say 80 percent of his passes every game but but you know if he's sitting like 70 percent like this offense mm-hmm. is gonna cook like it's yeah. gonna cook and and, and with, with and, and then we saw the element that he brings with his running with designed runs in the second half mm-hmm. scoring two touchdowns like it, it's just he's he's back to being that weapon that we wanted and you're feeling yeah. good about him as a weapon again um and he, and again we've said this over time it seems like he learns things and he applies things and he's smart and um that's so encouraging cuz he the offense really like really like was on point in this game they Hawaii couldn't stop that they they had to, I, I they they had a that one that that first that first drive where i think they probably went to the well too much on like those runs runs of the middle yeah. And kind of, you know, Hawaii was looking for it because they knew we would want to be running the ball. But, you know, at, but I, I, after that, you know, they, they were – if they even came back from some, like, big holding penalties. Okay, one point of emphasis, emphasis obviously, is wide receiver yeah. blocking. <laughs> the on the wide receiver like, screen had, holding. Yeah, that was three or four, good lord. I, like, holding penalties on wide receivers, that was nuts. Like, I, I've never uh, seen that before. Yeah, it was it – was f- Four, 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 four. I have at least four. Notes. Yeah, four, yeah, four. Yeah, it was, Which, it was a lot. That's four holding calls, period, in a game. But like to have them on the wide receivers. Yep. Um. And and yeah, like and in sub situations, they didn't necessarily need to do it. Some tapes it did really impact it, but um. But yeah, but yeah, that just very encouraging game all around. Um. You know the the defense probably gave up a few more yards than you would want. But they did mm-hmm. the bend don't break. That is when they're good. That's what they do. They give up some yards, but you know they force teams into field goals and they they force them into many many reps. So raising the uh, raising the number of opportunities to create turnovers. Yeah, um, yeah. And then they, they're finally able to get. You know they had such bad fumble luck throughout the year, and they got two of them this game. You know yep. it, it, it 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 typically evens out. And it, and you know it yeah. evened out in this one, and and they were they're both huge, yeah. And then a great great interception, um. So it was yeah that some really ad, looked like they looked like they were more athletic than the offense, which is what you're hoping to see the rest of the season yeah. with a lot of these teams. Yep. And Hawaii was you know Hawaii was not a good offense, and you know they held them to ten points. And yeah. you know Jeff, you picked forty two to seven. I picked thirty eight to fourteen. So I don't think either of us can complain about the <laughs> the ten points. Um, yeah. So it's it this you know t- to you know to cover it, it was like a fourteen point spread or something yeah. uh, to cover it that easily. Um, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all around it felt felt very good watching the game, the replay. You know, I've seen the score, looking at the stats, and watching the game. I felt better after actually watching what happened because they just looked yeah. they looked like they looked like dominant in many ways maybe uh you would have hoped some of the early running back runs could have done better yeah. and that that would be one nitpick on the offense is maybe the run blocking on those early running running back handoffs yeah i don't i don't know like on the one hand yeah i I'd, I'd love to see them come out and blow them off the ball right off the gate and and you know what i mean just like steamroll them down the field but I mean, I don't know that we're that we're capable of doing that to anyone. So yeah, I, it doesn't like I didn't feel like I, I was not all that upset or discouraged or anything by what happened on that first drive. My feeling was, I mean, it wasn't like every run was bad. <clears throat> there were a few that were, you know, small gains, but they had a couple others that popped for five yards, seven yards, like they. They were doing some things. And then, you know, early on, I mean, 
you know, we always make a lot about the script and we talk about, you know, if a yeah. team has a bunch of success right off the top, oh my gosh, the script and they, they were able to script that up and, you know, but, uh, you know, sometimes I think the flip side is true a little bit as well. Like, I, I mean, it, I don't have data in front of me to back this up, but anecdotally, it sure seemed like Mike Leach's teams often started um, pretty slow or at least not very explosive. Um, yeah. And so, but what was happening well, there I, is. Well, I think what Leach, yeah, you're going to say it. Never mind. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, you know, the script is let me figure out how the defense yeah, is going to exactly. respond to this or that. If I show them this formation, if we run this route combination, how are they going to defend it? What are they going to do? How are they going to set up? And then you figure out where the soft spot is. And that, that was what Leach was so good at as a play caller, right? Is he'd figure out where the soft spot was, where the defense like, oh, that's that's where I can attack. And then he would like stab him and twist the knife. Right. You know? And so Which he amazingly did from the sideline to be honest. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Amazing. And you know, I think there was a little bit of that here as well. You know, I think that they, they were, they were purposing to run. They were determined to run for all the reasons that, you know, we talked about last week and all the reasons everybody talked about Jake Dickert talked about, right? Like, Everybody talked about it. Well, you know, they came out and they ran it and some of it worked and some of it didn't. And then, you know, there was, I think, a little bit of a, a little bit of consternation there about how the drive ended. Right. Because you uh, you got uh, whatever, second and three or third and three, third and three. And uh, you hand the ball off twice and don't get the first down. Right. And to me, that was more a failure of personnel than anything else. Um, you know, yeah. Leo Pulasi had some good runs during the game, but he's also not really a power back. That's, that's just kind of not his thing. You know, if you've got three yards to get, or you've got fourth and one, you know, maybe, maybe put Schlenbaker in there. Um, as we found they out later, be, Wayshawn Parker to, was a little beat up, but they, yeah. they seem to be using Pulasi as a power back though. They've used him in a lot of short yardage. Yeah. And I don't so get it. I mean, I, maybe they see him as more of a power guy than Wayshawn or maybe in, in the deal with, you know, Schlenbaker has been hurt, right? So he came back this game, yeah. Um, you know, so maybe that was the deal. You know, they didn't want to use him in a power situation at first with him being hurt. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Or maybe they just went, you know, we're just going to run with whoever's back there and it'll be fine either way. Was, I mean, if they had had a power back back there, they would have converted that third and three, uh, yeah. Schlenbaker. I, I have very, very, uh, little doubt that Schlenbaker would have converted that one. So yeah, he eh, looked, you he know, looked really solid. He looked yeah. really solid in the carries he had, like he looked shifty. He almost broke one yeah. on the, like he was so. Uh, then they oh, just kneeled so it close. down after that. He was so, he was so mad because he knew yeah. he wasn't getting another carry, but yep. Uh, yep. he barely shoestring touch. But yeah, he looked really good. Um, I'm excited for him getting fully healthy and and getting back at being that. Um, if they can have if Wayshawn, hopefully, yeah. Um, but you know, Wayshawn is a freshman running back, and yep. this, this happens to freshmen sometimes. Yeah. True freshmen, they get beat up. Um, yeah. it's a lot more physical than high school football when you're the best guy on the field and everyone else is not playing D like any college ball and you're the only, and you're a D one guy. Yep. Uh, yep. it's a, it's a different story when everyone's a D one guy and everyone's <laughs> hitting you as hard as they can. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, uh, hopefully he can, um, be healthy, but you know, if, if Schlimberg can get, come back, um, and then they can use pool and, and take some pressure off Parker because he definitely seems like he's been a little bit less effective mm -hmm. lately. Doesn't have quite as much uh, quickness and burst. Not getting some of those big yeah. runs as mu as often yeah. as he was early in the season. So hopefully, maybe they can kind of yeah. give him sort of a working rest and and get him back in. Because yeah, it, obviously we want this running game to work. And yeah. um, but you got to have. We saw last year you could try to run all you want, and if your running backs aren't up to it yeah it's not gonna go well um, yeah and dickert dickert even alluded to the fact that um i think the phrase he used was used was that uh way sean was lacking a little bit of juice was the way he put yeah. it um just he's like you know you, you just saw the burst to get to the second level wasn't really there um and they did use him throughout the game it was funny i was like mm -hmm. after the game i thought uh i wonder how many carries he had in the side, he did, maybe he didn't carry the ball at all in the second half. And then I looked, and he actually did have some in the second half. That I was like, I must, must have forgotten about those. It must have been pretty forgettable. But yeah, I I think that uh, 
you know, with having Schlenbaker back, that that's a pretty big deal because you know now you got the three headed thing again, and and it does give Arbuckle some options, uh, you know, for running. One interesting thing that Matir said after the game that, you know, I kind of wondered about. Um, so he referenced all their RPO calls. And he talked about how they on their stat sheet that they use as a program, they combine the whenever an RPO is called, they combine the RPO yards and they present the RPO yards. So he said we had 170 RPO yards. Now RPO for people listening, run pass option. Right. Um, so out of the 444 total yards, he said 170 came on run pass options. Now, I, I think when most of us, you know, amateurs watch a game, if if you're familiar with the run pass option, most of the time you kind of think of it as, you know, an option to hand off and then kind of a rollout where there's an option to run by the quarterback or an option to throw by the quarterback at that point. So it's almost kind of like a, like a triple option the, kind of deal. The quarterback, the quarterback can, you know, with like, just make that read before the play, right? And, so that's what I was going to say. Throw, which we saw Matier do. Yeah. Yep, that's what I was going to say. So like these were more like that, where yeah. he's looking at at the box, he's looking at things, he's figuring out, okay, how's the defense lined up, and then he makes a call. So the ones that so I've been you know charting the offensive play calls, uh, you know, probably a lot of the ones that I charted up is like like play action, right? Uh, were actually RPOs where he was like, you know, okay, I can either run it here or I can, I can pull it and make a quick pass. And so there probably was plenty. Those are probably some that I character, uh, that I like categorize as a wide receiver screen that maybe are also, you know, RPO type plays. So either way, the interesting part about it to me is simply that, um, you know, we used to talk a lot about how Leach would empower his quarterbacks to make a call at the line. Uh, he'd yeah. basically send in a passing play and a running play. The The default was the passing play. And then, like, if the defense really gave you a really good look, then you could run it, right? Um, this seems to be sort of along those lines, like saying, yeah. hey, you got two play calls. You get us into the right one, and then you go. And it, it sure seemed like, I mean, given the amount of success they had, the consistent success they had. I mean, I wrote about that in, in the newsletter on Monday about the the success rate that they have, which was way higher than what they've had lately, just really consistently moving the ball in chunks. Um, you put all that together, man. It's That's, the, I think, the thing to me that's most encouraging about Matir was, I mean, look, 23 27 is great. You know, it's, it's awesome. 10 yards, over 10 yards per pass. Uh, that's awesome as well. But, like, the, just sort of the command, right? And they talked a lot about, after the game, about how they simplified it. Um, but the command of the offense to me, like that's the thing where you go, okay, now we're really ready to level up because when you've got yeah. that command and you're, you're calling it at the line, you know, that's, that's when you can really start to do some damage. Well, yeah. And one of the frustrating things watching Matir against Fresno was his delayed decision-making Yep, missing yep. guys that could have been open and it happened over and over and over again. So yeah, simplifying it for him, giving him uh, you know a put you know a decision at the line, um, that that that's great. Like, cause he made a lot of really quick throws off those RPOs, mm-hmm. and um, you know if that if that works, that's awesome. Um, and hopefully, you know they can come back to that. My prediction before Fresno, they could average forty points a game against the rest of the schedule. Mm-hmm. Well, they got forty two against Hawaii. Um, uh, I will. I will say, uh, you know, San Diego's defense is like a, not terrible, but not great either. Um, but mm-hmm. they have some successful areas for sure. Um, um, Jeff, I don't know if you any other thoughts on Hawaii before we move on to San Diego State. I mean, I think it's worth talking about turnovers a little bit. Um, you know, you mentioned yes. that, and yeah. a lot's been made of that. Uh, we have a pretty extreme positive turnover differential, even with uh, some of the interception that ma- interceptions that uh, Matier threw earlier in the year. And some of the poor fumble luck. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, anytime a team gets 
like with this kind of turnover differential, people people want to know what the what the secret sauce is, right? Like what is what is WSU doing that they're getting all these turnovers? And, you know, Greg Woods wrote a story about it, you know, like every, oh, we, you know, and, and WSU, of course, is like, oh, we teach this. We absolutely teach this. You know, it's like, well, everybody fucking teaches it, right? Like, I don't think there's any school in the country that doesn't teach, hey, go get the ball and run to the ball and try to be smart and jump routes when it presents. I mean, I I guess that's all a really long way to say. I don't, I don't think that WSU has like any particularly special ability to take the ball. I do think that they are doing a lot of the things right that can lead to turnovers. And that part's awesome. Um, so I'm not like downplaying it to the sen- you know, to the extent that I'm like, you know, it's just, it's all, it's all luck. It's all fluke. It, it's not, it's not, I mean, they've put themselves in good position. We know that, uh, you know, Ethan O'Connor's interception. We know that that was, um, you know, that was a product of film study and a product of knowing where to be. Like, so I'm not trying to like take all that away. What I am trying to say is, you know, that, that thinking that WSU has some sort of magic secret sauce maybe is a little, uh, uh, that that's like a little foolhardy um, and could, yeah. you know, in fact, I would even say like, look, we're San Diego state. I know we're going to transition to that in a sec, but they've only turned the ball over four times in six games. So they just, they just don't turn the ball over. They don't, they don't throw it very much. They don't, when they run the ball, they run the ball a ton. And when they do, they don't fumble like, yeah. you know, it's, there's a pretty good likelihood double WSU has zero turnovers this weekend. And it won't yeah. be because they didn't know what to do or they didn't have the right technique or whatever. It'll just be because San Diego state just isn't going to turn it over. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what you have to keep in mind with turnovers is yeah. When you play a team that's turnover prone, like Fresno state, like we said before that game, on this podcast, the guy throws interceptions. He's going to throw the ball to us at some yeah. point yeah. if we're going to catch did. it, right? And then Hawaii, same deal. Like early in the game, you could see, you know, Shager keeps throwing the ball across his body. He keeps doing that. He's going to throw one to somebody. Put Alukta, step on up, right? Like, you know, and then the the first fumble was a little bit, you know, a little bit fluky, right? The guy's kind of backing in and then yeah, he takes a weird spun hit. Yeah, right into yeah. it. Yeah. But the last one, you know, I mean, you, you blitzed and you that got a quarterback pressure. and – that was yeah. pressure is great, right? Like, so you, you, you can make these things happen, but at the same time, you know, you're playing a team this weekend where the quarterback doesn't turn the ball over and he does, they, they don't, yeah. they don't throw it very much. And so, yeah, just like kind of keep that in mind, I guess maybe now's a good time to transition to that, but you know, like people should remember that if we, if we're not getting turnovers, if we're not, you know, if, if we're not getting the, the plus field position that we got in the last two games, um, you know, that that's by design. San Diego state is one of the best teams in the country at field position because they don't turn it over and yep. they punt the ball. So, yep. mm, you know, that's, that's the deal. So anyway, San Diego state. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you said it like the kind of what stands out to you with them is the field position game. Yep. And has that translated to offense? No, no, it has not. No. They, <laughs> They average uh, a shade under 22 points a game, very similar to Hawaii. Yep. They're actually, it's funny, their average points per game. Hawaii, uh, coming into before WSU, was 21 points uh, for them, 20 points against. And now you have 21 points to 22 again, 23 against. Yeah. Um, you know, and then uh, San Diego State obviously had a lot of trouble against Cal. Um which would have been the toughest uh, game on their schedule so far, you know, in Oregon state, they had a lot of trouble against Oregon state moving mm-hmm. the ball. Um, you know, they have had their best two offensive games the last two weeks. They, I mean, Wyoming, it was like all the fourth quarter. Yes. Um, and then they, they put 27 on Hawaii at home. Uh, you know, obviously we saw that Hawaii, that wasn't right. That's nothing special. No. I had a, I have a friend that um, is in San Diego, and I texted him like, "Hey, I'm coming down this weekend," and he's like, "Oh yeah," he, he just like he's like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna you're gonna come down and watch watch you coos get at their asses beat," and I'm like, and, and so I, I was just like, "I, I, I don't think the so." Two screen, I sent him the two screenshots of the Hawaii scores. <laughs> I yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I guess, and, and he's like. He, he he's like, dude. I don't really know anything about college football. I'm like, that's. I, I figured knowing you. He's but, like, uh, I, I've but, act, I was actually just like saying stuff that I think you're supposed to say when your friend yeah, comes exactly. to town to watch a team. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, like they're, it's really interesting looking at, you know, like their home game against Oregon State. Yeah. Uh, 21 nothing. Now they haven't given up many points. Yep. Um, I think that that that's that's where the field position um, game comes into play. Yeah. That they they put their defense is not put into bad positions very often. They're twenty eighth in average field position defensively. Or sorry, eight yeah. sorry ninth ninth. They're twenty eighth offensively. They're ninth defensively. Um, so their opponents are starting on average at the twenty five. Yep, and that's that's and they're starting on the thirty on average. So yeah, they're winning that punt battle, um, and obviously in their games there has been a lot of punts. Um, yep. So that's that's something to watch. WSU hasn't been particularly good. They've been good at field position for their offense, not for their defense, because some of those turnovers, um, mm-hmm. and because sometimes you know it took Dean a while to get used to that punt the the punting mm-hmm. scenario, um, but. Obviously, WC, I think some of the field position, it's they have um, a pretty good uh, kick returner, and that that helps. Um, but but uh, yeah, it's because. It, but if you look at San Diego State, uh, when they have the ball, they are not a good offense. No, um, they are one hundred twenty seven twenty seventh in EPA per rush. 133rd in rushing success rate. Which, by the way, is amazing for a team that runs it. A lot. <laughs> like, like more than 50% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> they run it so much, and they are not good at it. And they're terrible like they, at it. They uh, they have run r- runs plus sacks 214 times, and they have 170 pass attempts. Yep. Like that's crazy in today. Uh yeah. they have they've allowed 13 sacks, which is not too bad at this point in the season. Um and they so they've they've dropped back 183 runs 201. I will like, say that's... about the sacks by the way. 13 sacks doesn't sound terrible except when you consider okay number one they've only played six games. So that's well, yeah, they, two how many plus times per have they game. thrown the ball. And then, yeah. yeah, that's the other thing, right? Like, their drop back frequency is not high, right? They're throwing the ball, like, 20 times a game. So they're dropping back, like, 20 times a game, 25 times a game. And they're giving up two two sacks a game on those, so on those 20-ish. So, 183. Yeah. Okay, so let's do 13 divided by 183, Jeff. Yeah, okay. they're giving up a, a sack on 7% of drop backs. That's awful. Yeah. I, that's, I retract that's really that previous statement. That's really bad. <laughs> that's really bad. Like really, that's, really, really. That's like WSU, Paul Wolf type stuff. Will WSU take advantage of that? No, like no. Like I don't. I don't anticipate that. But, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, we did against Hawaii. Like we and we got some good pressure at uh, Fresno. Like I I I I think we've shown the ability to get after the quarterback a bit against teams that, that I, do give up opportunities for sacks. I I do think they're. Like they're going to go all out on stopping San Diego State's run game and putting them yeah, that's in, true. in third for and, sure third and tens for um, sure by stuffing the runs. Um, yeah, like it's crazy. Yeah, that uh, they are 112th in success rate on dropbacks, and they're uh, so we say dropbacks instead of just passes. Um, but that that's what uh collegefootballinsiders.com uses i like that a lot um because yeah. it's basically college like typical college football stats a sack counts as rushing yardage negative rushing yardage but this is saying no the sacks we're recording as a passing passing uh, a pass and we're that's that's counting towards your success rate and your epa 116th in epa per drop bat it doesn't matter what they do they suck at on offense um, this should be a game again where WSU can have, you know, you know, they've given up 17 and 10 the last two weeks. It's sh- like, I would, it would be frustrating if they do more than that. They give up more than that yep. in this game. Yeah. Like it should not well, happen it's, against this offense. It, 
it's going to be in a low scoring game anyway. Um, not just because their yeah. defense is, you know, marginally better than what we saw from Hawaii. Um, it, like San Diego State's just going to, they're just going to shorten the game. It's just going to yeah. be an, it, this game is going to be annoying to watch. I guarantee it. Our fans are going to be super irritated. They're going to be like, it feels like we should be blowing them out. And we're only up by 10 points or something like that. I mean, it's it's going to feel like that because San Diego State is going to run the ball. They're going to hold on to it. They're going to run time off the clock. Wait, they are. It's, may, they might get a first down or two, and then you know, and then they yeah, put it back to you, and you get the ball back at your own fifteen yard line. They're it's running at least two shit. minutes off. They're running at least two yeah. minutes off whenever they have the ball. Yeah, uh, yeah. and because and often not much more than that because they have one of the worst uh, third slash fourth down success rates uh, conversion rates in. Uh, again, there this college football insiders dot com combines them, um, so they're at thirty three percent. So it's it's because they're terrible in early downs. They're always putting themselves in bad positions. They're not a good passing team. They don't want to yep. pass, but they're forcing themselves to pass because they're not good at running. But they're still going to run the fucking ball. Like it's it's uh, they're they're kind of baffling. Um, yep. Like it's it's just crazy to be that bad at running and you just keep doing it and you just and continue. But I guess if you're that bad at, <laughs> I, I and I got to think like some of like the that like some of that poor like passing success is because they're when they're throwing the ball it's in third and nine so often like to for, to get a successful uh, to to be recorded as a successful play on third and nine you have to get nine yards like and yeah. that's uh, but. If you're on first down and you throw the ball and you get five yards, that's a successful play. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, that might be part of their success rate. But yeah, they're just not good offensively. Like I, it, it against um, teams closer to WSU's caliber, uh, they have struggled to score. I'm talking Cal and um, Oregon State. They have yep. 10 points against Cal, and yep. and I don't even know how those 10 points came about. Couldn't tell you. Uh, you know, could have been a defensive touchdown. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, – a. I, I would look more at those scores than there's, you know, what they did against Hawaii, what they did against Wyoming. Yep. Um, yeah, those so, are yeah, teams that I, are rated below – WSU in you know whatever whatever your metric of choices, whatever yeah. your model of choices, the, both of those teams are rated at or below WSU. I guess Cal, I think in some is is probably right around WSU, even though the record's a bit Cal's worse. Cal's probably better defense. Cal's kind of flipped ACC like uh, Cal's yeah. Cal's better defense. We have better offense. Yeah, but still, it's you know I mean both those teams were three touchdowns better, and yep. so that honestly is about what your expectation should be. I would think for this weekend too. I, I will say what what we've seen while the offense may have has struggled a bit away from Martin, the defense has not. It, the, yep. they, they've like except for at Boise, fine. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, Superman will do that to you. Yeah, the, the Ashton JT coming through that fucking door for San Diego State. No, um, yeah, like I. You know, obviously we looked against Fresno State. They didn't have any outstanding running backs, but and they still kind of were able to run, so you still worry about that a bit. But this is a way worse running team than mm -hmm. Fresno State is. Uh, they do have a guy that they give the ball to a lot, Marquez Cooper. 151 carries for 670 yards. 151 carries already this year. Yeah. In six games. That's yeah. a lot in college football. That's yes. Uh, what thirty divided by six? That's twenty five carries a game. Yeah, twenty five carries that's a game. A, yeah, that's one hundred eleven like yards a game. One hundred twelve yards a game. Four point four, four yards per carry. Four point four in college is is not that good. No, it, that it, does that does not help. That does not help the yeah. offense very much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're they're just they're grinding him like he's. He's getting the ball over and over and over and over again, because really, like their next, like the next running back, like only has thirteen carries. Yep. 
Like so, it's yeah. it's going to be a whole lot of Marcus Cooper, and if you shut down Marcus Cooper, I there's you're good. Like you like yep. since that that's that's who's getting the ball. Like it's, and then you know their quarterback, you know he's he's only throwing the ball to the other team once, and that's the big thing. They had a freshman quarterback throwing the ball, two picks, but their starting quarterback. And I don't know. I, mean, I assume he's healthy. If he's not, I don't know. That can make a difference. As far as I know. Um, cause, uh, yeah, he, he, um, okay. He got hurt against Oregon state and then he missed a couple games. Yeah. So yeah, but he's back. So he's so better. Danny O'Neill, Danny O'Neill's your, your quarterback. He's better, but seven and a half yards attempt. That's fine. But I, I, for a quarterback that doesn't throw very much and is playing off the run, you would typically expect that to be North of eight. Yep. Um, you know, the kind of the Russell Wilson thing with the Seahawks. He always had a big right. yards per attempt uh, because he was just throwing bombs. And um, but, yeah, you know, obviously him being back, they've played better, but they've also played worse teams. Yep. Um, so it, that's that's something to watch. You know, he's but he's a little bit better. He's also a freshman. So we'll see. Um, but, yeah, like so maybe we could expect a little bit more capability from him versus how they've been doing so that's something to watch but still like yeah. they're so focused on running the ball and they're not doing it well um you slow down that run just make them convert long long third downs and long fourth yep. downs and and you'll be good and i and i'm i feel good about that um i i i feel good about them giving up two touchdowns or less in this game um but so let's move to the other side you know, we've, we've talked that to death. Uh, said defense is definitely San Diego State's strength. Mm-hmm. Um, their success rate is good. They're they're good against the pass um, in terms of success rate. In terms of explosiveness, they do give up big plays, uh, but they 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 don't give up that many successful passing plays. But they get burned. Mm-hmm by big plays uh, more often than most teams. So I don't know how to explain that. It's just that they they're not they're they're basically forcing teams into incompletions a lot and then mm-hmm. they're giving up a big play to on the bat on the other end. Um so they and it that's exemplified early down EPA. They're eighth nationally. So they they are mm-hmm. they are hellbent on that first uh, first and second down like getting you into uh, a tough position. But then when they are 93rd in third and fourth down success rate, 41%. So they're getting teams into these tough third and fourth downs and just letting them convert. Like, so uh, that's pretty interesting. Like, honestly, like, um, and there is definitely in this game, there should be more emphasis again on running. Like they, they do not defend the run well. Um, Hunter, Hunter, and let's see. I'm just looking around my laptop to my big screen over here. Uh, Hunter and ninety third in rushing success rate, mm-hmm. um, and hundred sixteenth in EPA rush. So WSU is is you know kind of average in rushing success rate they can look a lot better in this game. Yeah. So it's going to be worth trying to establish the run or whatever, yeah. you know, just because that's probably going to be, you know, easy money at times. Like um, yeah. just, you know, you pick up four five, six yards um, pretty consistently against this defense and potentially break some big ones. Um, so I would expect, I would expect WSU to run the ball a lot again to ham running back handoffs like they did last week against Hawaii. I would expect there to be some big runs. And I would also expect Kyle Williams and Kyle and then, uh, sorry. And then Chris Hudson and, uh, you know, Carlos Hernandez to get free at some point on some big, big passing plays. This, this yeah. San Diego state's, uh, gambling to create incompletions. They're going to, um, they're 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 going to give up some big plays in the process of that. Yeah, and they, to be honest, they haven't faced 
<clears throat> a team like us, I, I don't like. I don't know like a, a more it's definitely way the best to say offense that. they faced. Definitely best yeah. offense they played all year. You know, so when I'm looking at you know their yards per play allowed, um, you know Oregon State was at five point four, not great, but also. You know, Oregon State's a little different. I mean, I think they're they're worse than us, but also like just a different style of offense, right? Like they don't get the kind of they don't have the kind of quarterback play we do. California, same deal. You know, they've got uh, you know obviously a, a, a tremendous running back, but you know they don't get the same kind of quarterback play that we do. They were at six point seven yards per play, which is good. Um, yep. So you know there was that and then you know at central michigan 5.1 yards per play i mean you know whatever hawaii 4.88 at home again whatever we just watched that hawaii offense it's not a good offense um and then at wyoming again 5.3 like again you know i mean wyoming does not have the firepower that we've got the tools the weapons that we've got on offense so i you know i i do i, I will say i think it's going to be irritating i think it's going to be annoying i think that um, you know, there's going to be times where we get field goals and we don't get touchdowns and it's like, God damn it. Like, it's going to feel like super irritating, but at the same time, like, I don't know, man, I just don't see, I don't see any way they can keep up. Um, I re I really don't. And I, and I don't think we're going to, you know, drop 40 or 50 on them, but at the same time, like with the, with the way their offense is, you know, if you're, if you're pushing 30, um, or if you get to 30, cause they've, they've only given up 30 one time this year. If you're pushing 30, they, they do not have, they, they just don't have the ability to really keep up with their offense. Well, that's if, you know, if, if you're looking at it throughout the game, like our, you're, you're probably only like a, like 12 possessions versus maybe mm -hmm. like 15 in a normal game yep. or so. Yep. So if it, you're up there, at, I wouldn't at, be shocked if it was less than that. Even well, I would be I was shocked if like, it was something like 10. If you're around like three points of possession, um, and WSU is one of the better teams in the country at points of possession, points per possession, yep. um, then you're good. Like you're you're going to put up thirty, um, but yeah, it's not going to look as cool as like fifty, just no. because it's not going to be. It's it's you're you're not going to have the ball sixteen, seventeen times. Nope. Where you can you you score touchdowns on half of those, and you're at fifty. Yep. Like if you score touchdowns on half of your possessions in this game, you're going to be in the thirties. So, yep. um, yep. yeah, it, uh, that's, that's always something to keep in mind. And, it, and yep. I, I don't see any, like San Diego state knows they are facing a better team. And so they're not going to change what they do. They're going to still try to control the clock, limit possessions, and then hope something weird happens. And that's that's like what you said. That's what's going to make it frustrating. Um, so if we do have a bad turnover, that could be a big deal. You know, I remember uh, when we talked about the Air Force game at the Cheez-It mm -hmm. Bowl a few years back. Yep. The way Air Force limits possessions. Now, Air Force had a really good offense. So it was like we said, if you don't score once, like it could be over for you because yep. it, you're only going to get the ball eight times. Um. And but this, it's more like if you give them points, that's where you're going to be in trouble because you're not going to have just the number of possessions that will inevitably allow you to separate. Um, so they're always they're going to stay close just by mere like you're just not having enough possessions to separate. So I think like something that'll be big is scoring early. Um, like scoring on those first couple drives, yep. getting at 10, 14 points yep. on those first couple drives, forcing San Diego State to like have a little bit of of a moment to be like, are we still just going to keep running the ball? Yep. Or, and 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 then I really just I want to see the defense shut them down. Like I yes, they're not they're terrible offensively. I it would and now the, yes, their 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 quarterback that they have back is definitely their better quarterback, but. It, their running game has been terrible and they've still just kept using it. Yep. Um, I, I just, I don't like, I, I it's going to be really frustrating if WSU, uh, struggles defensively in this game. Like, and, and, but I just don't see it happening. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I do see it happening. Uh, I wouldn't, but I just, I, there's just not, there's not something that San Diego state has done that leads me to believe that 
they can put up a bunch of points on Wazoo's defense. Yeah. And Wazoo's defense is not great, but they're kind of average, and that's all you need to slow down an offense like San Diego State's. I mean, San Diego State put up 3.7 yards per play against Oregon. And Oregon 4. State. Th- or sorry, Oregon State, sorry. And 4.3 against California. Now, as we mentioned, right, the quarterback got hurt, didn't play against Cal. But at the same time, it's just like, I mean, I don't know how much of a difference that makes when you're going to run the ball 55% of the time anyway. Yeah, so. I, I, I would, yeah, I, yeah, hopefully, you know, five, five, five a play and under in this game and then shutting them down on third downs. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, shut, you know, holding their running back to, you know, two or three yards, you know, yep. in the first couple downs to now do, does kind of defense do that? I don't know. You know, they, they don't get a lot of negative running plays, um, but if, as long as they can stuff them for like one or two, that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Jeff, with all that said, I did the prediction first last week. Uh, why don't you get okay. into your score first this week? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I think um, it's going to be annoying. I think that we are going to be getting field goals when we wish we had touchdowns, all this stuff. But I really do think that we are going to score on a number of drives. So, and I, and I really don't think that they're going to be able to do much at all. So I, I'm going to go with uh 31 to six, 31 to six Cougs. Ooh. I think uh, it's I think it's a blowout, but I also think that it's like annoyingly uncomfortable for the entire game. Yes, uh, I will be there at the game. Yes, you uh, will. Flying out really late tomorrow night. Um, Woo! Uh, uh, wife has is on call till late, so then we had to just in case I had to take the latest flight out. Um, but we'll be there. We'll be there for Friday. We'll, we'll be at the Cougar Bar Crawl, except when I leave to go watch Hawthorne Heights for a couple <laughs> hours. Uh, for the second time just, in a week. Yeah, for the second time in a week. Uh, but I, get a, I, I wasn't able to see the full set because you had to bounce between sets. I mean, that's fair. Um, that's fair. Uh, but but uh, but he also now I get to see a, you know, a headliner set, which is always better yeah. in a small of venue course. and all that. Of course. Although... Although the thousands upon thousands of thousands of emos singing uh, "Ohio's for Lovers" was a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> thing, um, uh, and I and I, so I'm glad that uh, I went over and saw it, even though I would have seen them on Friday as yes. well. But yeah. yeah, so say hi to me if you are on the Cougar Bar call on Friday. I should be around. Um, I know, I know. So there's gonna be some of our uh, podcast uh, subscribers that'll be there. They've said. Uh, but yeah, get uh, say hi to me. I look like this. If you you know if 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 you're listening on the uh, um uh, you know on listen to just the recorded podcast, you can go to YouTube. You can see what my face looks like, <laughs> um, and you then you can find me. And he's tall. Uh, but I'll be at the game. I'll be at the big game as well. Obviously, I'm not going to fly down there just for the bar crawl, although yes, Cougs always win the party. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'll be around. Uh, say hi to me, but. And then you don't have to ask me what I think the score will be because I'm going to tell you right now. I I I always worry about road games a little more. Um, I worry about San Diego State really seeing this as like the biggest game left on their. Although they play Boise State, so it's not it's not the biggest game left on their schedule. Uh, they have a right, probably ranked team, you know, probably mm-hmm. potential college football playoff team left. Um, but uh, I do think they're going to take it very seriously. You know, there, there's going to be some wonkiness. Um, you know, WSU hasn't played particularly well for uh, away from Martin this year, so I, I'm just like, show me when you do it. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, I still have WSU to win. Uh, I, I'm gonna go 27 to 10. A okay. little, little frustrating, but yep, but get it done. Um, yeah. So yeah, not quite as a blowout as you, but still covering. I think. I think it was around fourteen, maybe. I don't know. It might have been yeah. bedded up. Um, no, that's, that's about is. where it's at. That's about where it's okay. at. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. So yeah, we both got the Cougs to win. Um. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just pleased. I, w- I want to get have a good time and seven thirty at night and just be watching the Cougs trounce someone and. In a in a one of my favorite cities, love love is in San Diego. Uh, but yeah, so Jeff, 
I hope I'll be having many beers to celebrate that one. Yeah. But I, some good beers in San Diego. Yeah. Um, but I want to know what you're drinking right now. Yeah. Well, what I'm drinking right now. Because uh, I wasn't paying attention on, earlier. Yeah. Folks on the YouTube. Uh, I'll hold the can up here. Uh, this is the uh, Out West Fresh Coast IPA from SIG. Oh, okay. um, yeah. This is. So when. When I think of a fresh hop IPA, like like when I think of like the the prototypical archetype fresh hop IPA, the kind of beer that made me fall in love with fresh hop beers, it's this beer. Like it is just like it's a West Coast style. Um, it's got that just sort of like that dank floral, uh, just like kind of earthy you know, flavor to it. Um, th- this is like, yeah, like I'm so glad I bought this. Um, you know, I've had a couple other ones, had a hazy, had whatever. Um, haven't really, I, I've not gone to uh, Rainier Growlers, so I didn't get any any uh, fresh hop like Pilsners or Lagers or anything where, you know, they're doing a little different. It's, you know, it's when I go to like Tacoma Boys and I'm seeing IPAs, right? But this yeah. one, like, th- like I said, this is the, this is the uh like like when i'm like hey here's what a fresh hop should taste like that's this beer it's fantastic glad i got one um yeah totally delicious we love sig yeah when I, when i had my my wife and i had our little fresh hop ale festival in our living room it was it was that one and the uh russian river bail breaker cro- uh, yeah. collab that i had a couple weeks ago on the show yeah um that 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 really stood out to me i, I of course um if you listen to us all the time you know i love the west coast ipas over the hazies so uh but i the both that one was really well done another one of their fresh hops not that one but another one won best in show at at uh at the yakima fresh hop ale festival which is kind of like if you win it at that like that's a yes fucking deal like every brewery's bringing because <laughs> everybody's to there. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, that's a. If you've ever never went to that festival, I highly recommend. Checking God, it we out. gotta it do is, that again. It man. is a blast. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, if, if for long time listeners, you'll know we recorded at the kind of at the festival at Single yes. Hill Brewing. At Single Hill, uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, if you go back and find that episode, it's pretty chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a that little. Out. Just yeah. had just had interviewed about eighteen random people and uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, yeah, as one does. But yeah, I am. I so, Jeff, a big lesson that I've taught you over the years, especially with IPAs, is don't buy an IPA without flipping it over and looking what the fucking date is on the bottom. Absolutely. Yep. And me, I. So uh, it was like a week and a half ago, probably. I went to uh, a, a certain beer store that I live close to, and uh, <laughs> they've they've lost a few um, employees, and they haven't turned over their cooler as much. Um, I should have known. So Centennial is one of the earliest hops probably the earliest hop to be harvested so the, a lot of the first fresh hop beers you see are centennial fresh hop beers now if i would have looked okay. more closely this electric fields centennial <laughs> by uh, <laughs> threshold brewing in portland yeah at the bottom it was canned on 828 oh. 828 that is <laughs> look Normal IPA, whatever, six weeks, fine. Seven no big weeks, deal. I don't care. I, I'm not as strict as I used to be with that. Yeah. Fresh hop, you're losing Fresh a lot. Hop. And I this 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 <laughs> this tastes like I bet it was really fucking good at the start. Yeah. But yeah. It, it has lost some of the fresh hopness, some of mm-hmm. the the kind of like that vibrancy that you get. Yeah. Um it's still a solid beer. Um, and I haven't had many from this brewery, so I'm impressed that it's still solid two months later. I am bummed that I didn't look it up, but I am kind of glad that I 
and I'm showing it because you know I love doing weird stuff where I get to talk and be beer nerdy. Yeah, and I'll say just if, when you're buying IPAs, check the bottom of the can. Always and always, uh, and honestly, like six weeks and fewer. It 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 depends on like it is typically the the way to go. It's it, and if you're gonna if you're gonna buy one that's six weeks old, like I did. Don't yeah. wait two weeks to drink it. Especially, um, by the way, especially yeah. if, like, I, I would guess a pretty good majority of our listeners purchase, they don't go to specialty beer stores to buy their beers. Like, they are, yeah. they're going to even, Safeway, they're going to Fred or Meyer. Or even, especially if you go to Total Wine. Right. That's that's a big one, right? Because they don't, Cause they don't gonna, refrigerate. They don't refrigerate they don't, their beers. They don't refrigerate, and they try to carry you know, 5,000 beers. Right. So they're, they're, they are not rotating stock. They are not checking, you know, how long stuff's been sitting on the shelf. I mean, you can go there and like grab something and it's like got dust on it. Right. Like you're like, wait a minute, what is this? You know, this layer of dust, like just do yourself a favor. I swear, you know, you, you will thank us, uh, you know, check that date. We've talked about the, the, the Bodie and Johnny Utah tip at Costco. Yes. You know, yes. they have the dates right on the box. Yes, on the if box. If you just look below, like, usually they're pretty fresh because they turn usually. those out. But yep, sometimes usually. they hang there for a while. Yep. And Bodhi can fall off pretty quick. Yeah. Um, Bodhi's it's, Bodhi it can go from can. It can go from the greatest beer of all time to, like, this is gross, like, in a month. And yep. so, like, you, you, like, just look at those dates, especially at Costco where they're not refrigerating it now you refrigerate an ipa it's gonna last way longer and that's probably what saved this uh ipa is because beer star keeps their all their beer all their to-go beer is refrigerated constantly like it's there it's there's a refrigerated uh storage in the back behind the cooler and then uh and then the beer just goes into the cooler so it's been it's been constantly refrigerated that probably is why it still tastes good yeah um but if I would have got this beer at Total Wine or at Costco or whatever, you know, at gro- you know, most grocery stores refrigerate most of their beer. Um, but if, if you go to a place where they don't, that those IPAs are going to fall off really quick. So, yeah, just check that date. Yep. Um, get the freshest one. If you got to move some Bodie boxes around or Johnny Utah boxes around to get that fresh, it's worth it, man. Yeah. It's worth it, especially I, I since they don't definitely, I have definitely pulled, like, a box a flat from, like, the second to the bottom, like wiggled it out <laughs> to like get a box of Bodie or Lucille out at, uh, out at Costco for sure. So, but yeah, like, like for real, like we're not, we're not joking. I mean, we're laughing, but we're not joking, man. Like it makes a lot maybe, better. Like if you're, it, it really does. I, the if you're getting an IPA, it. Yeah. If you're getting an IPA, make sure it's within like six weeks or so loggers. Not so much. Doesn't really matter. Pilsners doesn't matter as much, but like, unless it's West you know, coast, uh, West Coast yes. Pilsner, West Coast Lager, you know, sure. the big hoppy ones. It's hops. Right, are right. The, hops are really the hops like the are big the thing early yeah. on. Now, like a lager that's like six months old is not going to be super good. Um, but, but you know, a lager that's a couple months old is still fine. Um, yeah. And they're not going to depreciate because they're not relying on the hops for so much of the aroma and flavor. Right. They're more, it's more of a balancing act. Now, like these IPAs are so aggressively using the hot the hop as the aroma and the flavor right and that stuff can fall off so quick um so yeah we have talked way too long about this but seriously it's it's <laughs> like you 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 will enjoy the beer so much more you if, will if you actually find you will fresh, and like like i can't ones. even tell you how many people like i'm sure it's happened to you like a, a ton of times where people are like yeah i'm not really a big fan of ipas or i'm not really a big fan of this beer or beer style or whatever and it's like, yeah, like you're going to the grocery store and you're grabbing like the shittiest thing off the shelf, like, you know, because it's not, it's not, it's not fresh. It's not, you know what, like, I don't know. Anyway, it's especially with like, you know, the local breweries where you can, you can get stuff super fresh. I swear to God, man, a fresh Bodhi compared to a three month old Bodhi. Like if you've had a Bodhi like it, I don't know, T-Mobile Park or at Lumen Field, because you're like, oh, give me one of those guarantee you that thing's like at least three months old like just yeah 
do yourself look at that look at that date on the bottom man look at that date on the bottom we, yeah especially if you're in those grab and goes and you actually do that so yeah uh yeah if you're just getting one from the the guy real quick from yeah. the, the guys the the vendors that's you just gotta roll with it at that point yeah you're probably not but i, 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 <laughs> I will say just, bodies wait, I, i'm he, like imagining somebody like like you're like you know, he's getting, already like, the open. guy sir can like, I look hey, at wait 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 don't open that don't open that yet uh, let me check the date on the bottom <laughs> Um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> can can I please look at the bottom of that can before you open it? I'm doing you a favor. I yeah. swear to God, I was like that at like six years yeah. ago, Jeff. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe a little. <laughs> I w- I could have seen myself doing that. Like, wait, wait, wait! Don't open that! Don't open that yet! Don't open that can! I, I gotta check the, the date. date. <laughs> I will say Bodie is usually a better bet than like some of the other IPAs. Yeah, I went to for a Mariners sure. game. I think it was a Mariners game, and I, they had like RPM, and I'm like, sweet, I haven't yeah, had yeah. An RPM in a long time. Yeah. Oh no, I think it was a Green Day concert or something. It was at T-Mobile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I and, and I was like, sweet RPM. I start drinking. I'm like, this doesn't taste like Boneyard RPM. And I look at the base. It was six months old. Oh my god! <laughs> like it was from the yeah. start of baseball season, basically. Oh. And they had not sold it. And then I got a Bodie, and it was it was like less than a month old. And so, yeah, Bodie's usually a good bet because people consume Bodie in quantity. Yeah, and, and it's brewed locally too. I mean, that out. helps. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah. All right, beer. All right, fresh beer. Fresh beer. Yeah, beer. We love it. Go we beer. love our fresh beer. And keep your Keep your IPAs refrigerated. Yes, of course. Um, that too. But yeah. So, what? what we, oh, uh, we have <laughs> we know more about our football schedule uh, next year. Now, oh, last that's very week, exciting. They added Louisiana Tech uh, for late in the season. Those poor Louisiana kids gonna have to fly out in the middle of November to Pullman. Yeah. There's no fun. promise, re- no return trip. That's just, you're coming. Of course, we're flying down to Ole Miss in, in early October. Yeah. So, yep. uh, you know, it's just like the tiers of things here. Yep. Um, That's how these but work. I'm, I'm super stoked about Ole Miss. I'm definitely going to go to that. Uh, just to go to the Grove and, you know. Yep. Uh, and don't have high hopes of WC winning that game. But, God, if they do, like, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> If they do. Yeah, they call it in, in European soccer a famous win. Like when we beat That's right. When we beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin, that was a famous win. That was a famous win, um, for sure. Uh but yeah, uh so that and now we kind of joked about this when the Pac twelve broke up when all those fuckers defected. We kinda joked like, oh, WCU and organization just play each other over and over again. Like just who cares? Well, well, uh, here we go. WSU and Oregon State are playing twice next year, both in November. Yeah, <laughs> November first and November twenty ninth. It would it would have been nice if they would have been spread out a little bit. It would have yeah, felt better yeah. about that. Look, I, I it doesn't bother me. I we yeah. I I can't even imagine the pain that has gone into putting this schedule together. Yes, yes. Um, because they basically eliminated. Most of the Mountain West. Uh, yep. And and then by the time they're putting the schedule together, most teams like only have one spot or are completely yeah. full. With, there's there, It's like there is like less. To, it's like 10 teams or something that have a spot like left yeah. for next season. And money goes and, into it, too. Like, yeah, like you're ne- like this is a negotiation, right? You're not. Yep. You're not just like calling up teams being like, hey, you want to you want to come play a game? Like it's it's you know, they're they know where you're at. You know, they they want, you know, a pretty significant payday to come to your place. Uh, yep. It's even if they are, you know, like a like a lower team or a lesser team or however you want to think of it. It costs money. It costs it costs a pretty fair amount of money. And so trying to work all that out and, and, and keep yourself in a reasonable financial position, all of those things, it's it's really tough. And, you know, the Oregon State thing, my first my first thought was this sucks. This is this is shitty. Yeah. But now it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, it's just like at this point, we're just like, man, let's just get through this next year. Like, let's just fucking get through yeah. the next year. There's something better on the other side, you know, just whatever to get through this year, because 
it just is what it is and it's still going to cost us less money than whatever the mountain west was going to try to extort out of us and it's fine it's fine it's fine who cares yeah i yeah my first blush was like oh seriously like just like you and and i, and I was annoyed i you know i'm mostly annoyed just because i'm fuck, we're, we're all sensitive to this like we're gonna play acrovallis twice in two years yep and they're only coming to wsu once yep um so i i hope there's some like they'll play at wsu in 2026 even it out or something like i i don't know like to restart the schedule because i it, that's that's the frustrating part because it was like that with the apple cup we're going to Ole Miss. They're not coming back to us. Like we've done that many times. We went to Auburn yep. twice. They didn't come back to us. Went to Notre Dame, and then their return game was playing us in San Antonio. Uh, you know, Oklahoma State played us in Seattle. We should have brought them to Pullman. Not that it mattered. It was Wolf. I don't think it would have mattered. Um, but um, but yeah, it, it it's just a uh, it's. And then I thought about it. I'm like. I, I, I can imagine like most teams have to put have to schedule three to four games in a year. That's it. The rest is yep. your conference. Your yep. conference does the work of it's the already rest built of in. WSU Mine had not one issue. guaranteed game. They had one guaranteed game, and that was Oregon State. And that was it. And Oregon State only had one guaranteed game, and it was WSU, and that was it. So they have had to plan they're basically like independents having to plan 11 other games. Yep. And all the, the like Notre Dame has a bunch that they just play every year. So like they have a scheduling like agreement with the ACC. Yeah, like they 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 they, they the, even they like got sick of doing it and we're just like, yeah, like, yep. we'll just we'll play a bunch of ACC yep. teams. We don't care. We're so sick of this. And and so like you know, WSU just and and Oregon State just I I'm sure they're just exhausted and yep. this is this is going to be more cost effective it, it's it's saving headaches it's saving phone calls it's saving time mm -hmm. um by the way there's some fucking random uh radio host in kansas city that said it was <laughs> sad and Damn embarrassing shit. and they, the pac-12 should just go away it's like what the fuck are you talking like what one you you're in kansas city what the yes. fuck do you care about the what pac-12 like what do you Why care do you at care? all? Like just go away, dude. Like like what what do you care? Like I and then like two, it's not it, it's it it was annoying, but is it sad? No, who cares? Like just playing a fucking football team twice. Like what it what was sad is that we had to do it in the first place. If that if that's what he's saying, I guess I agree with that. It's not embarrassing. I think it's shrewd. It's clever. Like it, yeah, let's, mm -hmm. I think it's got to be like it's like highlighting what they did to us. Like, look, we got to play each other twice because you guys fucked us, you know? Yep. And, and so, yeah, like I, it's that, that was hilarious. He's, he's cutting just ratioed to death. And it was like, who, I don't know who found that first. It's just like, who are you, dude? He also, he has, I will say he has like 35,000 followers. He's got that blue paid for blue check mark. But he he literally has in his bio that he's an influencer, which is so cringy. That's so cringy. Like influencers, yep. like I I've I one time early on when I, I was a journalist covering business tech, I had this guy that was that he, he had a company and and you know if you're a journalist like if you have a small company like the the small companies like come and talk to you because they just want they want you to write about them. Yep, and he said like, "Wow, it's just so nice to get some time with an influencer like yourself." And I'm like, "Shut up, dude! Like that is don't, please don't call me. <laughs> like, I'm a journalist. Uh, I'm a, now a podcaster. Influencer is so cringy. Like, I just think of like the TikTok people dancing and shit. Like, it's just like if, like it. It's one thing to like just to call yourself that. That's how you end up with having terrible takes." Sorry, I just had to make fun of that guy. I don't even care what yep. his name is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, you uh, like I, most of you probably know what I'm talking about. So like, it, yes. it's it, look, it's it's it, it's it's ridiculous that we have to do this. But I, you know what? Like, it it's gonna save some time. We're up to ten games now. We have two more to fill. Oregon State's done. They have their schedule done. 
Um, so they don't have to worry about it anymore. We have one less game to worry about. Uh, I think the next two will be home games. I yep. think we have enough road games. Uh, so what, although having it in November, we know like there's going to be like the open spaces. They have to do it. Mm-hmm. There's going to be two October home games for the first time in God knows when. And I am so excited about that. That'll be thrilling. Because because for one, <laughs> if there's one on that October 18th weekend, I'm probably going to miss it going to uh, when we were young. When again. we were young. But it, like, but I if, you know, knowing that there's another October game, which is the ideal time to yes. go to a Wazoo football game. It's, it's like time. mid, like early to mid October. <laughs> And, yep. you know, the leaves are changing. It's crisp, but it's, it's not beautiful. cold yet. Yep. You know, like you do have the risk of rain, of course, but that's usually later October, more risk. Um, yeah. Like October 1st, to like 20th and, and Pullman is just like, it's, it's like idyllic. I, cause I love wearing hoodies, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I, you know, like I love wearing long sleeve stuff. I love hiding my beer belly. You know, it, you know, I just, I love all that. I love, I, I like my yeah. WSU stuff that is like yeah. warm weather, like, you know, like cool to cold weather more than I like my WSU stuff that I have to like wear and show everything off in the <laughs> hot sun. So I am very excited to have more than one October game. Who we yeah. will be playing? God, who knows? Who knows? I guess he probably can narrow knows? it down to like nine or 10 teams. Yeah. But, you can probably um, sort of figure it out. Yeah, point. you can figure out like th- th- there's not that many teams you'd be talking to unless someone, you know, unless someone changes it around, which yeah. can happen. It, it it does happen. It happened pretty late last year. So we got Texas Tech on the schedule. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just but, really, but yeah. really, really fucking hard to like put a schedule together in a year like that is I mean, most you have of to have like, matching open dates. So you have to have yeah. matching open dates. Yeah. It's like Tinder, man. You both have to be swiping right at the same time. <laughs> at the same time. It's just like you look at these non-conference agreements that the contracts, right, that schools reach with each other. They are typically. Yes. OK, so you are now moving on to your old crimson. I, I have already I've already moved on to mine. Um but it's like, you know, I mean, these things sometimes get scheduled out six, seven, eight, nine years in advance. Like, oh, I'm going <laughs> to. Well, that was on TV or whatever this is. Sorry, sorry for the audio only folks on, on the podcast. Uh, Craig I spilled beer all over my desk. Craig... I'm glad my laptop is up higher for the video. I have no Craig Craig did his his fancy beer pour trick into his uh, mug. I will say so that this, it, was, uh, this is way too warm to do that. Yeah, it's way too foamy. Yeah, and I will say that uh, it, it is a little fitting though that you did that with the uh, with the drunken sailor coog on your on your mug. Um, yes, you know with the uh, the 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 foam. I'm so glad we won in everywhere. that, so we can wear it again. I'm glad we won in it. <laughs> This is totally this is what y'all get if you what actually watch the podcast. Salient point that you've had that you were talking about, Jeff. Yeah, if you watch it's it, the on most YouTube. the greatest, the greatest way. This is gonna be. We're definitely clipping yeah. this for the man. For I don't the even Instagram, remember what the fuck maybe. I'm talking about at this point. So whatever, man. We're good. Schedule we're good. football. Schedule, schedule yes, stuff. We will have yeah, football game stuff. to play. Uh huh. Yeah. The two games. Eight series years in advance. Against- That's what I was talking about. Yeah, like all this stuff scheduled in advance. And so trying to get it scheduled one year out is like insane. And yeah, that, and that's, and that's why the mountain West was able to get 15 million bucks out of us a year ago. Right. Is like, they knew that. So, you know, so they went ahead and did it and then they, they, you know, they tried to up the ante and, you know, of course that we all know how that played out. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm yelling more today because my kids are not here because we dropped them off at the grandparents because we're flying to San Diego tomorrow. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so, yeah. Woo. All right. Uh, Volleyball and soccer real quick. Sit with, this, sit with this puddle of beer because we don't yeah. have much time left. Good job. So no, no, reason, to, no reason to make you edit, <laughs> Jeff. Um. I, can't, I can't now. Like, there's video here. Like, I can't edit the video. Like, <laughs> we're, this is it, man. This, this, yeah, this no is one, all there no is. No one ever edits video podcasts. They just let it all Well, go. I know, but, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a video editor. I will say if if you are listening just audio, 
it will be worth going to the YouTube video and going to about an hour and 16 minutes yeah yeah and watching the look on watching my face craig when that pour his starts. old crimson yeah it is uh yeah that's yeah that. don't do that with a warmer old crimson it foams too much yeah i like yeah. to just i'll pour it in the glass and just let it sit there because it's like a 16 ounce glass it can hold it yes. all uh, even with some foam but there was too much foam this time like uh, but it's also better to pour hard because you get more of the carbonation out. It doesn't go in your belly. Anyways, yep. so we talk about beer again. But anyway, soccer. Did, what, how'd they do yes. that? They were, they, were, uh, they were not at one. They missed a PK. I don't know what happened after that. Yep, finished at 1-1. One, one. Uh, Damn. Another, another missed opportunity that you know just kind of makes yeah. you go yeah they they just, they just sort of are what they are right like uh it's kind of been the it's kind of been what they've been yeah i mean the they're they're a pretty good team not a not a really good team uh probably you know above average which is you know fine i guess except you know it, for the standard of our program that's not actually fine so that that's just kind of where we're at and you know, like one one like in a vacuum, one one on the road at Santa Clara. Um, I think when I was watching the game, they had a ten next to the Santa Clara name, so that would tell me that Santa Clara was ranked tenth, Craig. Um, so drawing the tenth ranked team on the road in a vacuum, not a bad result. But I, you know, I mean, you're, you're you're sitting there in they, the middle of the WCC at some point. Yep, they're ranked you 10. Win a game. Yep. Yeah, I mean, at some point you got to win a game. I mean, that's uh, that's one of those good team, games so. like. If you get that game, you know, maybe you could start dreaming. Now, I will say that came on the, the heels of losing four to three at Gonzaga, which is not a good result. No. Nope. Um, Gonzaga hasn't been that great. Nope. Um, especially when Giving you finally up four goals score. to Gonzaga. Is like, finally, you score. You score more than one goal. You score three and yep. you give up four. That's so frustrating. So, yeah. Yep. Just one point from the week. Well, only one, only two points from the last three. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, WCC title hopes are all but dashed at this point. Yeah, I mean, you're um, five points back with three games to go. I mean, that's... And then I would say at-large hopes are yeah. all but dashed at this point. So... Uh, I mean, you're five, five, unfortunately, and six. Yeah. You haven't won and a game really on the not, road this year. Yep, and and they only have three left against. Yeah, you're just you know this is not gonna win that set. Nope. You you win the if you won those two this week. Yeah, you're in you're in a good spot. Yeah. Or even if you beat Gonzaga and and have that draw with Santa Clara. Yep. But honestly, they needed that win. They needed to beat Santa Clara. Um, I mean, you'd be sitting there at look if you if you had done that if you had beaten Gonzaga. You'd be sitting there at 12 points. You'd be in, you know, fifth place, but you would also only be two points back of first. Like you, you would be in an okay spot with those three points instead of, uh, instead of the loss. And, but instead you got that loss and you're sitting there on nine points with three games to go. They gave up four goals, like four goals total. Let's see, they gave up one, two, five goals total in the previous four matches, and they gave yep. up four to Gonzaga. Yep. Yeah, not good. Gonzaga does score goals. Like, if you look at their games, yeah. they, they do score goals, but they they also, I don't know, man. Give up goals. I don't know. You got to be better. You got to be better. So, not good enough. They're not going to make the tournament again unless something really, really, I don't know, weird. Ha- I mean, even if they won the last three games, I can't imagine they would. Uh, they I don't think they could. Large. I don't think they could even. They can't win the league. I think they're too far back. That would be. I mean, I, like I suppose it's mathematically possible, uh, but yeah. you know, it's it's not it's not really, you know, plausible. So, yeah, bummer. Again, let's see. They are. Oh, it, it crashed. Website crashed. I can't. I can't open that website. It won't let me. I think I saw that WSU is at nine points in the, like the one second I saw the standings, and now it. Yeah. Now it's they're at nine. They're at nine points. They're five points back. 
of Santa yeah. Clara. You know, they had they had the opportunity there to, you know, again, so yes, the game, technically, they're on 12 points. I mean, if if they had won that game, they're sitting on twelve. Santa Clara is sitting on eleven. Uh, essentially, they're sitting they on are, eleven. Yeah, they'll be getting. You know, they, WCB at eleven points if they won the game, or eleven points. Sorry, yes, eleven points. Yeah. Santa Clara sitting on eleven. You'd have a couple teams at twelve. You'd be right there. You'd be like, yeah, this is great. It's not there. They're not. They're, they're just. You know, soccer program's not not what it was, man. And they had a PK to I win know. in the second half. That that is just that is heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh let's move on to volleyball. That was a little depressing. Uh volleyball had a bit of a mixed bag of a week. Um they they've they didn't have any five match five set matches. That was a that was a, a different thing. Uh but they they, yeah. they beat Oregon State in you know in the in the pack two matchup. Um Yep. In four sets, Oregon State not 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 great. So that was good. They took care of that. When they came back on Saturday, playing at San Diego, and lost in four matches. Not so. Good. I did not watch that yeah, one. Not so good. Uh, I did watch a lot of the Oregon State one. I did not watch that one at all because I uh, was at watching emo bands. I was probably watching. Yeah, Chiotos. I didn't watch it either. Probably watching Chiotos. Fucking. <laughs> play their first set in uh, eight years and but, it was the greatest goddamn thing i've ever seen there you go. uh still in a good spot though you know 11 and 6 overall 6 and 2 in the conference um i i, I have no clue where uh what that means for any ncaa tournament possibilities other than we're a half game out of first place so that's good well, win the conference uh, and you're in but at large no clue so win that conference and you're in that's Yep. Uh, and we do have, you know, uh, volleyball is a little different than soccer. We were talking about soccer's only got really three games left. Um, volleyball's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games left in the regular yeah, season. Yeah, they're up Lots till November 29th. Still. Yep. Lots of time still to, uh, uh, you know, win some matches, win a bunch of matches, and, uh, you know, potentially pile up some wins. So. Yeah, they Yeah, I wish I knew more about volleyball. They, I, I mean, they, so I can't really offer their record a whole lot of insight. Their record might commentary. be a little bit misleading, but you can't take the wins because they've they've been so good in five sets. Um, yes, but you can't take the wins away once you have them. So once they're banked, no. they're there. Yep. Um, so if they can yep. just keep winning, you know, they they can make the tournament. So yeah, yep. um, and Katie Ryan is still amazing and. Destroying Badass, people, I think is the the phrase yeah. you're looking for. Uh, so yeah, volleyball. Um, it's still in good position. Uh, tough loss, but still in still in a good position in the league. Still a chance to win the league. Um, I think they are in a better position than anyone anticipated coming into the season, even even in the WCC. Um, so they obviously lost almost everyone. Um, yeah, and, and a new coach and everything. Um, but, but yeah, it's, they've been, it's been fun. Uh, you know, ESPN plus watching, you know, the matches and stuff. And it's been fun getting to do that. Um, and, and I, I think like the, the quality of production has been like slightly better than those, uh, those, uh, the pac 12, uh, in-house broadcasts. Um, so it's been, it's been pretty yeah. fun, been enjoyable, Yep. but yeah, so, yep. so Yes, volleyball, soccer, still chugging along. Um, so, Jeff, we already plugged. We don't got to plug. I, I will say um, I started a TikTok account for Podcast versus Everyone. It's at Podcast versus Everyone. And I started an Instagram account for Podcast versus Everyone. It's at Podcast versus Everyone. Um that's a VS, not the spell that word. Uh, I am since we are doing these video things, we are posting clips now to those. We are we're posting them on Twitter as well at Pod versus Everyone and at the Craig Powers. But but I but it's way better. You're way better served to uh, watch those on Instagram and and uh, TikTok is kind of a better experience. But 
Um, I, I uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that and go follow those accounts because I don't want to be posting them for no one. Um, although we got a ton, uh, the TikTok video, we got a ton of views on, even though we have like no followers on TikTok. And I think it's a thing where they just the they, algorithm. No, I think it. they just give you a lot of views on your first on your first post, so yeah, you keep coming it's, back. It's, but anyway, so Jeff, with all that said, go fucking coots. Go fucking coots, Craig. Black lives matter. Black lives matter, and get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. And support a union. Support a union.